Now let's have a look at the module editor, first by creating a new module. When I create a new module, I have the option of starting from a blank module template, or I can load a module template that comes preloaded with a prototype skills list, or comes preloaded with prototype mini tasks. Let's create a totally blank module. Like the mini task editor, the LDC Core Tools module editor allows for collaborative editing in real time and has comment bubbles along the right side. So if I adjust the collaboration settings, I can give my colleagues view, comment, or edit access. I can also decide who among the module's collaborators should be listed as an author on the module's byline. Again, I can also use collaboration settings to make my module public in the curriculum library. If any of my other colleagues are simultaneously viewing, commenting, or editing this module, I'll see an icon up here that indicates that they are in the module. If we ever try to edit the same component of the module at the same time, the system will present a warning so that we don't overwrite each other's work. As you can see, the entire module is laid out in the expected order. Overview, section one, what task, sections two and three, what skills and instruction, and section four, what results. Each section also has its requisite components. However, I don't need to create or edit my module in any rigid order. I have the flexibility to go back and forth as much as I like. Note that each component of the module editor has a view mode and an edit mode. When I'm done editing any component, I can click save or I can click onto a next component and my previous worked on component is automatically saved. Most work to be done in the module editor is completely straightforward, but let's take a look at a few key parts of the module editor. After defining my module in the overview, the most common first step is to start designing my teaching task, which I do first by selecting a task template. The task template selector suggests for me templates I might want to use for my module's teaching task based on the grade level, but I should think about the purpose of my task and then use various filters to determine which task template I want to use. Selecting the task template allows me to now fill in the blanks to create my actual teaching task. Next, I can add optional demands to my teaching task. Because I've selected a task template for this module, the module editor now provides me the most likely common core standards I wish to tag this module with. It makes some suggestions for me, but I can uncheck these. I can also toggle between different grade levels to find different sets of common core standards, and I can adjust the reading strand depending on whether I'm teaching informational texts, literature, or science or social studies specific instruction. If I wish, I can set some of the standards I've added as focus standards. Focus standards helps teachers design the rest of the module with those particular standards in mind. Once I've set focus standards, I can toggle between viewing all of my module's common core standards and my module's focus standards. Because different states have different content standards, and because there are other commonly used standards that come from other organizations, there is also an additional standards selector. I can use various filters and search criteria to find standards that I'm looking for and then add them to my module. I can also set any of these added additional standards as focus standards as well. I can add text that my module's teaching task uses in this section. I can either upload a text as an attachment, hyperlink a text on the internet, or name and describe a text I'm using that's only available offline. Note that Core Tools also provides me with a rubric to use for scoring the student work that is the result of my students eventually answering the teaching task. Once I've completed my draft of most or all components in section one, what task, I can now create my skills list in section two to ensure that I end up designing day-to-day -day instruction that meets my teaching task's skill demands. In Core Tools, section two, what skills, and section three, what instruction are found together. Core Tools always provides four default skills clusters to start from. These clusters can be modified or deleted, and I can also add other skill clusters if I wish. I can then create skills that go in each skill cluster. The module editor's add skill feature gives me two different ways to add skills to create my skills list. The first option I have is to select a skill from a default list of skills that are commonly taught in LDC modules. 
Since I clicked to add a skill from the preparing for the task cluster, the system provides me skills that are appropriate for that cluster to choose from. The skills I can select from are divided up into categories. For example, the skill task analysis falls under the category task and rubric analysis. If I decide to select a skill from the list, like task analysis, I'll see that it provides me with a generic skill definition which I can use or I can modify it as needed. For other skills on the list, there is no provided skill definition and I can create it myself. When I add a skill to a different cluster, I'll see different skills available to me in the pick from a list option. For example, for the reading process skill cluster, I see these skills available. However, if I ever want to add skills to a specific cluster, such as to reading process in this example, that are typically intended for a different cluster, I can override by pressing edit here and selecting a different source for my skills. In the near future, there will also be various discipline-specific sources of skills I can override to as well, instead of just the LDC default skills. The second option I have for adding a skill is to use the Create My Own Skill option. Here, I simply name a skill on my own. This provides me total flexibility. I can name the skill with precision based on the demands of my teaching task, grade level, and discipline if there isn't a selectable skill appropriate for what I need my students to be able to do. It's important to note that I do not have to complete a full skills list before designing my instruction. Most of the time, teachers create a full skills list before adding instructional mini tasks, but Core Tools is flexible in this regard. I might add just one or a few skills and then add mini tasks for those skills before I go on to create my next skill. It's entirely up to the user. Now we're going to take a look at a module that already has a full skills list created as well as some mini tasks added to it. After adding skills to my module, I can always go back and edit them or add to them at any time. I can also drag and drop to reorder my skills if I need to. It's important to note that at any time, if I just want to focus on my skills list, I can toggle this section to either let me just see and work on my skills list or to see and work on my full instructional ladder, which is the skills list plus its instructional mini tasks. Let's now proceed to add and edit mini tasks for this module's instructional ladder. I'm always able to add new mini tasks in one of three ways. I can add from my library, add from the LDC curriculum library, or create a new mini task. If I add from my library, I'm brought to the library screen. Here I will find all standalone mini tasks that I have saved in my library. I can click to preview any mini task. Then, if I determine that I found a mini task that I want to become part of my module, I can add it. The same exact process takes place when I choose to add a mini task from the LDC curriculum library. The skill filter will be auto set based on the skill from my instructional ladder, but I can override this if I wish. I can use the curriculum library's filters or the search feature to try to find the exact types of mini tasks I'm looking for. Whether from my library or from the LDC curriculum library, I can then use that mini task that I've added as is, or I can go in and edit that mini task to make it work properly for my module. Otherwise, I can always create mini tasks from scratch from within the module editor. Just like I can with skills, I can drag and drop to reorder the mini tasks in my instructional ladder if needed. And just like I can with all components of section one, I can return to any of my skills or mini tasks within this module at any time to make changes or to add additional skills or mini tasks. It's important to note that if you build a new mini task directly within the Core Tools module editor, that mini task is only found embedded within the module. It will not appear in my library. However, if I decide I want to copy a module embedded mini task into my library so I can use it standalone or with another module, I can do so by opening the mini task within the module and then going to more options and selecting copy.
Even though I can attach worksheets and other resources mini task by mini task throughout my module's ladder of instruction, there's also an instructional resources section found after the instructional ladder. Here I can attach any instructional resources that might apply to the module as a whole, including a writer's notebook for students. Now we see that this module section two, what skills, and section three, what instruction is complete. And I have a full instructional plan in place to help my students with the literacy skills they need to perform well on the teaching task. Over the course of designing this module, I might have used one of the formative juring features found under more options to self-assess and or get feedback from a coach or one of my other colleagues to determine whether or not my module is well aligned with the LDC juring rubrics criteria. We'll discuss this more in another screencast. After I teach this module, I can attach scored samples of student work in section four, what results, and I can reflect on my experience designing and teaching this module. I may want to make revisions to my module based on what I learned from having taught it and from reflecting on it. Or I may want to make a second copy of my module so I can retain my originally designed version alongside a revised version. Either way, now I might want to consider submitting this module for formative juring or even for national juring so it can be considered for publication as good to go or exemplary in the LDC curriculum library. We'll discuss this more in another screencast. Before we go, let's take a quick look at other actions available under more options within the module editor. In addition to the juring features that we'll explore separately, here I find that I can copy my module, delete my module, adjust my module's collaboration settings, or export my module as a PDF. Let's take a look at a PDF version of my module. Finally, we can see this module in my library where several actions are available under the options menu on the module card.